Kendall King and the Houston Astros are officially at the All-Star break, and it's a good thing because Kendall needs a huge break from the Astros. They have been absolutely horrible. We're below 500, but Kendall is having one of his best seasons ever. Now, we are in the home run derby right now, going up against the likes of Bryce Harper, Mike Trout, uh, George Springer, even our former teammate is our first-round opponent, and he hit 24 home runs in the first round. Now, Kendall, as you can see, has over 300 career home runs. Hopefully, we hit number 400 by, you know, later next season. But look at this. We have to hit 24 home runs to even advance this round. That's one of the most challenging things that Kendall has ever had to do in the Home Run Derby. So to do this, it's going to have to be ridiculous. Now, if you're hyped to see Kendall in the Home Run Derby, let's aim for 300 likes in today's video. I believe that you guys can do it because not only will we see the Home Run Derby, we're going to see the All-Star Game as well today. Now, Kendall is cruising along here about halfway through. He has nine home runs. He's about to hit his 10th right here as this one goes all the way out to deep left center field for 428 feet. Now, the minute 30 left, we have 12 home runs, but this one is cranked way back to that same spot you saw earlier giving us 13 home runs. Now we're up to 14 with 18 seconds left. The good thing is we have a bonus round, and we get in the last 60 seconds of your round. Basically what happens is the clock stops as long as you're hitting home runs. The moment that you hit one that doesn't go out, then the clock starts all over again. So we are killing it. That one goes off the pole out there. 21 home runs. Now Kendall is ripping these balls left and right. This one's going out to left center for 400 and nearly 80 feet on that one. And we've tied it up here. We're moving into the bonus round. Kendall just needs one home run. And he advances past George Springer. And believe it or not, Kendall actually goes to straight center field, 417 feet. So 10 seconds into the bonus round, your boy Kendall King advances. And the streak of always winning the home run derby can still be alive. Mike Trout congratulates him. But I think Mike Trout might have talked a little trash there. So we're going up against Mike Trout in the next round. Freddie Freeman and Bryce Harper are going to advance on their side for the opposite bracket. But Kendall, a recap of his first round, 25 home runs. The longest being 488 feet. But look at the flick of the wrist. Kendall's going out again to left field, starting off this round well. But if we thought it was hard to go up against George Springer, Mike Trout hit 26 home runs. That's just, I don't even know. I don't even have words for that. I don't know if we can advance at this point, but we're doing pretty well so far. About two minutes in, we've got seven home runs, and McKinnell drills this one out to deep center field for 438 feet. We're up to 12 now, under two minutes with a minute 45 left, and this one is a monster shot. That one is almost going to hit the billboard out there, almost hit Kendall's own face. So 15 home runs, we're under a minute. The same rules apply here. As long as we keep hitting home runs, the clock will stop and be on our side. So down to 22 seconds, Kendall has 17 home runs. He is struggling a little bit in this stretch. We need to hit a few more if we want to make sure that going into the bonus round, that we'll be okay. Now with 20 home runs, it's our last pitch here. We hit this one right off the fence. That's not good. So we're into the bonus round. We have a minute and 30 seconds. What can we do? We're down six home runs, and Kendall tries to go out to right center field. This one is deep. This one has enough length, and it gets out at 425 feet. Now with under 30 seconds left, the clock is ticking. Time is against us. We need two home runs to tie. That's all we need, two home runs to tie or three to win it. So 388 feet as that one just squeaks over. We're down to two seconds. The ball is coming in. It's our last one to hit. If this one goes out, we're good. If we don't get it, we lose. Your boy, Kendall King, 493 feet. Give this man a standing ovation because he absolutely uh, deserves that one. And as always, if you guys are in the stands, if you're catching these home run balls, let me know which one you caught. Tell me which round it was, which one you caught, and if you're going to keep it or if you're going to sell it. You know, Mike Trout is up here in the tiebreaker. He's going deep to center field of his own 492 feet, nearly matching Kendall. He's already got one home run. He's going for home run number two here with under a minute left. This one is out to deep left center field, and that one is out at 470 feet. So with 10 seconds left, Mike Trout only has two home runs. He's struggling a little bit, but he is going to get his third home run right here. So this one goes out to deep right field for 436 feet. But that's all that Mike Trout gets. So three home runs in a minute and 30 seconds. Maybe he's a little too tired. He doesn't seem too pleased right now, but Kendall... He's got a chance to get back to the finals, but he has to hit four home runs. Three won't do it. He needs four here. Now, Kendall's going to start off here going out to deep right field, and you already know the Sultan of Swat is out here putting the ball out in the stands for you guys. With one home run now under 60 seconds left, Kendall's drilling one out to left center field. This one is going to get out as well in a quick shot to left field. And with three home runs, we have under 10 seconds. Kendall needs one, and this one is a moonshot. Exactly where we won this one. 489 feet, almost 500 feet there. And Kendall King is going to advance to the finals of the Home Run Derby yet again. Now, can he defend his crown? He's going up against Freddie Freeman. I think he actually went against him a couple seasons ago. Can he beat Freddie Freeman again? We are about to find out. So Freeman starting out here going to left field. That one's barely staying in the ballpark. He's got four home runs now with under uh, about three minutes left, almost at the halfway point. And Freeman gets another deep shot here to center field, 437 feet. But under a minute left, this dude only has 11 home runs. 
I don't want to talk too much trash, but if I'm Kendall, I'm feeling pretty good because that's not a lot of home runs here in the final round. With 14 home runs, he hits one way, way up in the sky. That one is actually not going to make it out. So 14 home runs here for Freddie Freeman. If I'm Kendall, I'm feeling pretty good about myself. Now, as you guys saw, 26 home runs in the last round. Then he wins the tiebreaker against Mike Trout. Can he get 15 home runs and win the home run derby crown yet again? Can he beat Freddie Freeman again? That's the question that everybody wants to know. But he starts it off with a moonshot to left field. He's got another one pitched down low inside. He's going to drill this one to left center field. That one is also going to have enough to get out of it. Cincinnati's ballpark is beautiful. It's a great backdrop for Kendall hitting all these home runs. But you know what? I want to hit that truck. You see that truck all the way up there? That's what I want Kendall to hit. That would be ridiculous, but let's see if we can do it. Now, Kendall Yokes on the left field here. Under a minute 30 left. We need four home runs to tie Freddie Freeman. This one is out at 410 feet. So we have 13 home runs. We need one more to tie with under 45 seconds left. This one is a no doubter. 473 feet, 30 seconds left. Can we do it? Yes, we can because Kendall drills one to straightaway center field. That is a moonshot, ladies and gentlemen. Your boy Kendall King has officially won the home run derby again. I don't know what to say. This dude is the greatest power hitter of all time. He has 324 career home runs, and I think at the end of his career, he could possibly push for 800. Now, a recap, he gets 25 in round 1, 26 in the next one, and 15 in the final round. Everybody before the All-Star game wants to dap up your boy Kendall, but let's see if we can carry on those home run hitting power into this game. Now, Buster Posey also made it to the All-Star game, uh, as did Andre Sahara. So we have three people from our squad actually in the All-Star game. The Yankees also got three other people. We have Joe Cortez pitching for us. Garrett Cole is actually the starter in the National League. Did not see that one coming, but here in the first inning, we got one out, one on. Let's see what your boy can do. And he puts one out to right field. This is looking like a home run. Is the magic still here? This one's going to go off the bottom of the fence, though. Kendall's going for a double, but his teammate stops. They throw it to third. They didn't even see Kendall there, so he retreated back to first. That might be the longest single that Kendall has ever had in his career. Then we're on the base path. They throw it to Yasiel Puig, but they walk him, so we have bases loaded now. Garrett Cole, yeah, you got to be a little nervous right now. So the base is loaded, one out. This ball's going to be hit right up the middle to the second baseman. He's going to field it easily. He goes to first. One run scores, but now we have runners on second and third with two outs. So Connor Gillespie's up. He's having a pretty good year, though. Batting over 300, 18 home runs, 56 RBIs. Not quite what your boy Kendall's doing, but it's still a good year. But look at him knocking in an RBI there. Kendall's going to score easily. Yasiel Puig is actually running hard. He's going to score as well. So we increased our lead, and things are looking good for the American League. But look at this. The National League has scored. Kendall's back up. We got two on, two out. What's going to happen? First pitch, though, was going to be a low fast ball that we're going to lay off of. Garrett Cole still in the ball game, looking a little suspect. Next pitch is in. This is going to be low. Kendall's going to swing. He hits it right up the middle of the, the center fielder. We're going to try and get a guy to score here. The runner from second is going to go all the way into first base. So Kendall moves over. Another single form. Can a man get a double today? Apparently not. So we're two for two with two singles and an RBI. Uh, we're up eight to two at this point. Kendall's got a guy on. He got two outs. He fouls off the first pitch here. Next pitch on an 0-1 count in the third, and Kendall goes deep right center field. Can this one get out of the ballpark? It's going to be close, but unfortunately, Christian Yelich is going to snag that one. So moving into the fourth, we're still up 8-2. Nobody on, nobody out. Kendall's back in the field. Finally, the ball's getting hit to us, and what's going to happen? It's hit deep in the hole. We're going to field it cleanly. Don't want to throw an error here. He gets it, and it's just there to the first baseman in time. So a good little play for Kendall. Now still in the, in the fourth inning, Ernie Parrott's coming up. 2-1 count, two outs. The next pitch is coming in. He drills up right to Kendall. Kendall's going to try to snag it, and he just gets a hold of it. Can he throw the runner out? Unreal speed there. Parrott's going to actually get into the first base easily. Kendall, I thought, was going to get him out, but maybe that arm isn't as strong as we thought it was. So Kendall's back up here in the fifth, two for three with an RBI. Two outs, one on, ball's in. It's going to be inside there, a four-seam fastball. Next pitch here with two outs. Ball's coming in, and Kendall gets a hold of it right past the pitcher, nearly hits his feet. That's going to move the runner over to second base again. Another single for your boy Kendall. We're three for four in the day. We got another single. A man could only hope for a double at this point. Now, Yasiel Puig's up. He has two runners on now, including Kendall. Two outs. What is Puig going to do? Puig is going to hit a dribbler, and that's to the second baseman. It's going to be an easy out there. So Puig gets thrown out, and they pinch hit for your boy in the seventh inning. We were trying to do big things. I felt a home run possibly later in the innings, but they pull us. Can't be too mad, though. We end up getting the win 10-3. to Kendall does not get the All-Star Game MVP, but look, we played really well. Maybe we can carry that on to the Astros the rest of the season. Thanks for watching today's video. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos. Hit the like button to share your support, and I'll see you guys in the next one.